Hello, everyone, and welcome to our session. Uh, I'd like to introduce today's presenter, Nick. He's been a senior systems analyst with us for over 17 years and a certified expert on all things CATIA and 3D experience related. Today, he'll be talking about the power of design simulation on the 3D experience platform. Uh, just so you know, this session is recorded and it will be available to you later. And uh, we'd also love to hear from you. So if you have any questions, you know, feel free to ask. Uh, we'll ma I'll make sure to let Nick know about it at the end of this webinar. So that way he can take the time uh, to do a little Q&A with you. Okay. So with that, I'll pass it over to Nick and he will start the webinar. Thank you very much, Mayor. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nick and I want to welcome you again for this uh, design simulation uh, webinar. Uh, this is uh, a series of our different uh, webinars we are having uh, this year to introduce our customers and potential users to the industry or do domain specific roles offered on TDX platform. This is a new thing, everybody is hearing about it. So we just want to introduce our customers and show the power to help you uh, in your current or future design or engineering solution requirements. Now, uh, regarding solid uh, experience, uh, this is a new company. You, Many of our customers who know us or people who know us, they know that we are different companies, Mechanica, Solar Expert, Additive Manufacturing, but now from this year, they are all under one banner of solid experience to give our customers a uh, 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 like a complete umbrella of solutions across the domain on every field of engineering. So today I'm going to present you the functionalities available on the platform for FEA simulations. And we call them power of simulation on the platform. During the session, all the attendees will be muted. Uh, but if you have any question or queries, please, you can raise your hand or you can type the question in the field or in a chat, and we will take it up uh, at the end of this presentation, and I will try to answer it to the best of my abilities. For today's session, a quick brief is that I will start with a, a presentation to highlight the advantages of using TDX platform, uh, 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 like, uh, we, uh, which is to offer our customers and what we are different offering, starting with the designer, engineer, and the expert analysis levels. Uh, this will show you the look and feel of the complete end-to-end -end solution. And the, with the ease of user friendliness and the visual-based assistance, which will help even the non-specialist to very easily operate this uh, simulation. So now what I will do is like I have introduced myself. So I will just uh, stop my uh, webcam. And I will just go into the complete presentation mode. And start presenting and talking. So I'll give you a better space to look at all the screens. So I just want to con uh, confirm with Mayor that uh, you see my slides, correct? Yep. I, uh, well, not the slides yet. Right now, I see Solid Experience and Mechanica. Correct. That is the slide, first one. Perfect. All right. There you go. So, okay. So here we will uh, uh, talk about the, the power of the simulation for the sustainable innovation in future. And what I mean by that is, like, if you look at the designers, uh, face a lot of challenges these days. You have a very good tools in the form of SolidWorks, Kitia V5, and even on the platform for modeling or other uh, CAE needs. But what happens is that when a designer starts working with uh, any new design, they start with their main experience, their gut feel, some hand sketches or calculations. The one thing which they lack is that and at how quickly they can verify or validate that what you are designing will um, will survive the actual real life application or test that when it is put into production and when it will go into the real life application. So that uh, uh, limitation always restricts the designers to be more innovative and also optimize their design. So 
even in the detail design phase, what happens is that when you are freezing the designs and releasing it for prototype tooling or final tooling, you have to send it to some sort of uh, analysis group or analyst in your company to, who will run it and then give it back to you. What happens in this is that the complete link is broken because you are using a given CAD tool to model it, then you are transferring it into a neutral format, sending it to a specialist analyst. They are giving you a feedback, you are trying it. And what happens is what I have seen in the industry that you do not take an initiative to do that many iterative changes because this process is very time consuming, expensive, and costs a lot of um, hindrance in the whole progress of the project. So to avoid all this, uh, and to overcome this, this is the power of platform for simulation is that we have we are providing the simulation tools in the hand of the designers. And the people who are using our uh, tools, which are Kitia V5 uh, and Abacus uh, type of solutions, for them also here the integration, when I show you the live demo on the product, you will see that the integration is seamless, a lot of functionality, and the way the things work here in collaboration is amazingly cool. So when the simulation is given in the hand of the designer as a design tool, what happens is that you can identify the flaws in your conceptual design lot early in the whole design process. You can compare and propose different options and prepositions, like you're starting from what type of rads or fillets or type of shapes you want to go or the thickness of the part, you name it. And then you can put all these much before into the path of development of your product so that it can be taken care of. And the end result is a much more evolved, better product in a given time. And definitely it is a lot of saving on the time because there is not many iterations. And the more importantly, nobody most likely misses the very important problem, which could otherwise be missed because of this broken information, non-collaborative way of working in our conventional environments. Now, from a linear product development process to the integrated and congruent process, is what is the transition from a regular CAD systems to the platform. So currently, like you can have the tier V5, SolidWorks, and then you can have some type of a product data management solution on top of it, like an OVR or others. And then you have another type of solutions for specialist uh, analysis like uh, Abacus or others. And then you work in a di different silos or individual domains and try to communicate with each other with uh, walls in between the different departments. The platform gives everything on a same, same platform. Everything is collaborated and anybody can use different departments, can access the information. And what we call here is that, that it is the single source of truth. That means either a designer is looking at it or an analyst is looking at it, at it, or even at the manufacturing and guy is looking at it, everybody is looking at the same information at the same time. And, and, and every, anything which updates, everybody gets that update. So that is the idea. So now the basic today's objective is to highlight the power of Simulia, which is a finite element analysis, for designers and engineers. So this whole solution on platform is developed keeping designers in mind because you might not be a full expert of analysis, but how you can easily operate it and work with it. The technology which is available to you is out of the box, Abacus. It is unified environment depending upon how you want to run it or what you want to do, everything is available. It is not like that you want, if you want to do the fluid, uh, fluid analysis, then you have to go to a different solution. You want to do 
uh, plastic simulation, you have to go to a different solution. It is an integrated tool. All the um, uh, apps which you get, if they have the ability, then you can do any type of analysis if you want to. It is completely integrated. So that means there is no CAD, CAE, or PLM interaction. Everything is on the 3DX platform, well integrated. Amazing collaboration amongst different users, different departments, and saves a lot of time. A uh, lot of errors are eliminated because everybody is looking at the same data, modifying the same data. And if somebody is working on it, you can have a real time picture and knowledge that what is going on. The scalability, again, we, we start with a very basic product for designers, and then we can go up to, we can do some more uh, frequency buckling model analysis on that. Then we can add another set of uh, linear dynamics, and then we can have another set of nonlinear, and then can proceed like that. But not compromising the produce productivity of that. The productivity is the ultimate goal, and the way they are all synced, when you see the live demo, it will be slightly evident that how seamlessly integrated the solution is. And last but not the least, that this whole thing is available on the cloud. So that it is very easy to install and operate. You don't have to pay for the hardware and, and expensive softwares and maintenance for that at, at, at a company premises. So what is the advantages, real advantages of simulation on the platform? These, uh, the, the structural designer, which, which is like a engineer or designer who is making these products or developing the product, they use the same tools which the specialist or a senior analyst will use. So what I want to highlight here is that are people who are aware of uh, SolidWorks or Kitia V5, there, these solvers are different. So it could be Alphany solver or other solvers. But here, the backbone is from the base level tool is Abacus. So you are using the Abacus solver to solve it. And that is an amazing power here. Lot of power, lot of functionality, and Abacus is known for its structural solvers. It is best in the industry, in best in its class. Now, because you are getting an abacus, so there is no way, no way of you, you people getting oh scared about that that I'm using uh, abacus. No, the way the, the the solution is provided and is structured, it is streamlined with a proper assistance wizards which you can use to uh, even guide the non-specialists to run the whole analysis and make it work. Uh, again. The live demonstration will help you understand that. It is completely customizable to your company specific needs. So many a times, like when I've worked with the people, you have to run some similar type of analysis again and again. So what we do is, is using the CAD modeling techniques of publications and others, and to do some parameterization and relations and formulas, we can make a template where every time you can swap the parts and you can run the simulation very quickly. You do not have to redefine all the pre and post pro, uh, processing again and again, and you get a qu quick results very quickly. It runs very fast here. And again, it gives a seamless integration between the initial design analysis and the analysis tools, because what, you, what a designer do at his level can be seen by the analysis, and what he analysis has done can be seen by the designer. So the scalability again, and the collaboration is such that, that you start with a basic uh, product where you can do a part and an assembly analysis, uh, which is linear, structural, frequency, and buckling. And then you can go from next level, which is called a structural engineer, and then where you can do a linear uh, linear uh, dynamics also. And then you can keep moving from forward from that. You can add a nonlinear, then you can go further and you can even go up to explicit, explicit dynamics. And like that, it can, you can scale it up. If you're on a cloud, it is just like a matter of paying some more money and getting that role to use it. So the scalability is amazing. 
The other powers which are provided on this um, platform simulation roles and apps is that you have a rule-based modeling already included into your meshing. The only first level product have automated meshing where the mesh will be defined automatically and it's very cool. But after that, for every other role, you have the complete rule-based advanced meshing capabilities to do any type of complex mesh, reuse it and uh, expedite your pre-processing operations. Uh, and because it is all on the platform, that means that it is completely in a database. So there, it is not a file-based system. So the collaboration between different users and designers is amazing. You can split the work easily. You can divide that, okay, the, the main frame is done or even pillar by pillar, like A pillar is done by designer A, B by B, C by C, and like that. And then you can bring it together it is very, uh, very good model assembly, which is available in uh, slightly higher licenses where you can assemble a, a different meshes or things which are done by different users in one model assembly, and then you can simulate it. So that is what is uh, very amazing, again, in the simulation on platform. Uh, the post-processing has improved a lot, a lot of functionality available very fast results i will try to show you a few in my uh, demonstration uh, again like you, we have helped our many of our customers who are currently using the um, kitia v5 abacus type of or solidworks type of applications to make the design uh, the simulation templates where you can have the different uh, solid or surface features defined and published so that so the idea of this whole thing in a template based approach is that i can swap my components and based on the new geometry automatically the contact definitions the boundary conditions and the mesh specifications is transferred mesh can be rule based also and then you can quickly get your post processing site done compute it and look at the results very quickly so that is the idea. And also it is to conserve your company, corporate and company intelligence because if we have developed a process and spent some time to, to say that, okay, if I'm solving this type of assembly, say a suspension system, uh, what you need to know, what are your results and what is the mesh sizes? So every time there is not reinventing the wheel. Everything is preset. I know that for this type of a part, I will need a tech mesh or I need a, a mesh filler in that, and what will work perfectly fine. Once I have gone through all that process and my FEA results are matching my test results on the labs, I am pretty close. I make a template and keep reusing it. It is good for training even new users. So your guy lose, your company le guy leaves the company, you don't lose that intelligence, you capture it. So that is, another big advantage now the other thing what uh, the, uh this uh, on the platform uh, which is done is that the multi-domain optimization that means let's look at this uh, a carbon spoiler on a car we need to check it for the structural optimization for a, for for, for uh, and we can also want to check it for the frequency we might need to check uh, do a composite analysis because finally we are making it for with the composites we can also want to do a fluid structure on that. And all these things are integrated, are available on the platform, and you can use it. The other advantage of integration and on the platform is that currently we have different solutions like SolidWorks, Abacus, Kitia V5, Tosca, FESAFE, and Kitia Analysis. All these things are all now in one container. You do not have to translate data from one system to another, lose the parameterization and the ease of modification, but everything is under one tree. It is so amazing, very powerful, very user-friendly. The last thing is, which I want to make you aware, that we are promoting cloud 
cloud-based solution very aggressively. And the ease of cloud is that you get the same functionality on the cloud, but you can get going on the cloud within an hour or even less, 24 hours support on it. And you, ha you don't have to maintain your servers and other hardwares and technical resources to manage your uh, IT. Everything is managed by the SOC Cloud, and you can only use it. Just get a password, get play, pay the money, get the roles, and start using it. It is that simple. Now I will talk about uh, the like the few offerings which are there on the simulation uh, roles on the platform. The base role start with we call it a structural designer. It is just a linear role. Do a very simple linear analysis for your parts and assemblies. Uh, limited uh, uh, loads and restraints, but still can work very well for uh, starting level conceptual design. Then the next level is a structural engineer where we can do slightly more. Then we can further do, and we will call it a structural professional engineer. And that is like, a, you can also include a nonlinear into it. And I can do nonlinear analysis with that too. And then after that, it there are two roles, which are SSU and SYE, which is structural analysis engineer, which are the high-end analysis. That is a full-blown abacus, multi-role, unified, multi-domain applications. So SRD, again, it comes with the role, which we call structural designer. And then these are the apps available. So these are limited apps, only you can define material and do that. But if I go to the next one, then I can get the structural scenario where I can do frequency, buckling, steady state, thermal, harmonic, and modal dynamics. Uh, I can also do multi-step sequencing on that. And then if I go to SFO, then I can go up to nonlinear and do all that and a few more things. So that is how this is the scalability which I'm talking about. Now, if you go to very niche, or specific roles like a plastic injection, composites, flu, uh, the fluid dynamics, and others that can also be added on top of these roles to make it uh, more effective. This is a very quick explanation of what these roles and how they scale up. So again, the basic uh, structural designer is linear, single step, natural frequency. If I go to the structural engineer, I can do multi-step analysis, natural, and I can do modal dynamics too. If I go to the next level, which is structural performance engineer, then I can add a nonlinear component and implicit dynamics. And if I go to the next level, then I can do the explicit analysis too. And that is how it scales up. Now you can have at a design level only handling this one. And then when the serious analysis wants to do it, they can do uh, at this level. The way this whole thing is integrated, which we talked about, the complete simulation, because this is on the platform and everything is object in a database. So even the mesh you create is an, is an object, which is called uh, FEM representation. The tree is so uh, intuitive and interactive that we call it a MSR approach, so the model, scenario and the results. So what do we do in the model? We will do the meshing, material connections. In the scenario, we will cater, we'll make our structural uh, analysis cases and the result is to do the post-processing. Again, uh, like we said that it is to keep the designers in mind. It is very interactive and user-friendly. It has a lot of uh, visions and assistance to guide the non-specialist FEA uh, people to run it very easily. From the computation point of view, you uh, all these roles which are here at the bottom are embedded compute for four cores. Whereas for SYE, which is the a full uh, abacus type of a role for comparison. There you can use, compute it with the tokens and then you can use any number of cores, doesn't matter. And 
Otherwise, there's a third uh, solution also on the cloud where you can buy the credits and compute on the cloud. And that is a cloud, which is a cluster available for this all, where, where, where the CPUs and the memory is not a limit. You can go up to 128 CPUs very quickly and get your very complex analysis solved in a couple of minutes, which will take hours or days on your local machines. So now I will just switch to my live demonstration. And these are the basic contents of the demo, which I'm going to show you today, where I will uh, show you the automatic meshing and the some advanced meshing tools. Then I will explain you this MSR model scenario result history tree and how to work with it, material definition, connections, few structural, quick structural analysis cases. And the main important thing, which is the power of Abacus, which is available on the platform now, is the general contact. And you will see that too. And then the computation methods and the post-processing of the results. So now I will try to quickly switch to my other screen. to show you the live demonstration on the platform to show you that how the simulation works. I need a quick confirmation from you, Meru, that you can you see my 3D yep. screen, screen now? Yep, it's, go. it's there, it's good. Very good. So this is the, we call it a native app. We, our IT people also call it a thick client. I am not on a web app, but it is very good and cool that all the results which you create the the plots, the graphs, or whatever can be seen on a web client, which can be uh, operated on your uh, very small laptop, iPad, even your phones. So it, that is how the collaboration works because the results can be seen by the senior people to comment on, and have, and they don't need the high end complete analysis or design tools to review it. So that is, again, a power of platform. But this is a thick line. So what I do is I will just run a quick search. This is like an example of a pump, like a flute pump. And I search that. This is a very powerful, uh, like a six tags. Uh, we call it like a six tags uh, search, where, what, when, where, how, who created it. And I can say that who is searching starting with a ge uh, geological location, my own collaborative space. I can create collaborative space based on my projects, based on my customers, based on whatever I'm trying to do. And on that, I, I'm searching it. And then I can search my physical products. I can search my simulations. I can search my results. So if you look at this in the type, it tells me that this is my physical product from which I start. And I have a simulation also saved because in a live demo, I have to have a a safeguard if something happens, the material is separate. So what happens, the difference on the 3DX platform is that here everything is object because this is not a file-based system. So whatever I do, even the mesh on this assembly, which I will show you, will become an object and it's called FEM representation and it can be uh, handled. But because everything is object, it is so easy and flexible to link and relink and reconnect one thing to the other and make it work uh, in complex environments and simulate it very quickly. So this is the example. This is an assembly. It has approximately seven parts here. Uh, one, uh, this is a housing, the base, there's a gasket, and there's a four bolts here. Now, this is, a pro this is just a product structure. You are seeing it. If you can expand it, you can see that the material is all already defined. We'll talk about that in a minute. Now I hit on this compass and I go do my rules. So I just want to show you that based on my role, so say for example, I go to my structural uh, uh, designer role, which is this one. There are the number of Rules available, uh, number of apps available in that role are limited. And I only have linear structural validator, so it, it cannot do multi, uh, multi, step, uh, multi step or uh, multi case analysis and others. But if I go back and I take a role like structural professional engineer, like uh, the level three, 
I explained to you. Here I have more apps. Now, there are two ways people operate on this. One is that first they start with the structural scenario. Sorry, the first they start with the structural model creation and they do the, the meshing, the connections and the material definitions and the properties. And then they go to the uh, actual uh, simulation. I sometimes try to do differently because I want to show the power of MSR model scenario results three. So I start with the uh, uh, structural scenario and it asks me to run a simulation. I can say that this is my uh, webinar. I can name it, I can do other things. And now as soon as, as I click OK, you will see that all these commands at the bottom and this tree will change. And now it is asking me that do you want a structural case, you want thermal or a thermal structure combo? Because I am in a role which is which is a structural professional uh, performance engineer, which can only go up to structural, a static, and nonlinear. If I go to a higher role, it will show it will start me showing me more, like like it can uh, start showing me linear perturbation, it can start showing me explicit and other things. So let's say structural. And I go, okay. So you will see soon the tree will change. It has already changed. Currently, this is my simulation. So my on the top, this was my actual assembly. This is now my new simulation I just created. So that is how these tabs are getting created. Here, this is my, uh, uh, again, the end of the model. I have my assembly. When I create the mesh, it will create the mesh there and the connections. This is the scenario that when we go to the next step and create our uh, static analysis cases, and then this is the result. So when we do the computation, simulation is done, then we get the results. So this is what MSR uh, 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 tree to help the users, whether it is a designer or engineer or an analysis, very easy to operate. So here now, because I am in the simulation, I get three options. I have the model and the mesh option. I have the scenario and I have the results. The same thing is available here. Based on my setup, I change. All these commands will keep changing. So I go to model and I go to mesh. Actually, I could have started a new uh, find element model there too. And I want to create a new one, not the existing one. When I create a new one, on in the simulation and platform, there is a very powerful automatic meshing tool. So I have the abilities to pick that what I want to mesh and do I want it automatic or manual or none. So I will just show you quickly automatic and show you the capability that how automatic meshing works uh, on the platform. And I say, okay. So as soon as I say, okay, a new FEM rep object is getting created here. And you see it is here now. And here they are the nodes and elements and the mesh is already there. And these solid properties are already created. If I want to actually execute the mesh, I can go in the mesh and I can say, I want to update the mesh and you will start seeing it here. Here is the mesh. Automatic mesh is there. You see that it is getting created. The bolts are meshed automatically with a much finer, the inner gasket is also getting meshed, but there are a few warnings there. I can go, I can reframe on those warnings and see where the problem is, but I will elaborate on that too in a minute. Now here, one thing I missed, because what I could have done is that I do not want these bolts to be analyzed like the 3D components, and I will use a virtual bolt, which is another powerful tool here on the platform. So let's do this. I will go here and I will delete these four tetrahedron meshes for my bolts. And I will also have to delete their properties because otherwise it will affect me. Now, while I'm doing this, I will just want to bring to your attention that there is a very interactive feature manager. It gives you a complete tabular form of your analysis, 
all your stages are shown, model, scenario, results, and what you're doing. I can select from here and delete it. I can select from here and delete it. It is very interactive and powerful. Multiple ways to achieve the same thing, very difficult to miss it out. Now, if I go to this bolts and I hide these 3D bolts because I don't want to see them, and this is uh, the way this um, uh, mesh is created, this is automatic mesh. But now because I have a problem in this mesh of the uh, top housing, what I will do is let me get rid of this tube. Say for example, I don't like it, or I could have modified it. I'm just showing you the capabilities. So I go here and I go to the mesh and I want to do, instead of tetrahedron mesh, I want to do oxy tetrahedron. And then I go here and I select this, I go five and I say mesh. When you mesh this and you say, okay, one more quick thing I will show you, there is there could not be a problem because here there was an issue and now it is much more finer. Similarly, if you go, I can also go to the display and the powerful analysis mesh visualization tool, which will actually show me where are the problems in the elements. Not only that, you can also take a sectioning and you can um, just give me a quick thing. Uh, I don't want to see this, so I can hide my thing here. And this is showing me the actual meshing happening. But if you go to the hole, that is a problem where it is highlighting it. So what I will do is I will close that. And I will show my these three components. There is another quick way of uh, in the display to go to the view and keep this visualization management here on all the time. So where you can quickly go Either you can hide your mesh or you can hide your uh, shapes or you can do your other scenario items to be hidden if you want. So I hide my these uh, um, FE, uh, like uh, fine element meshes. And now I know that there's another problem in this, in this area. So I go to this, double click on this mesh. I'm modifying the mesh. And this is a, I want to go a local mesh. And I want to say that in uh, this area of the base, I want to mesh because that is what it was failing. And I want to change it from five to two millimeters. So it is localized meshing, we call it. I can pick the faces, I can define based on the seed nodes on that edge curves or whatever. So if you re redefine the mesh here, and I want to show the mesh, you see that the mesh is redefined in these whole areas now, and that problem is gone. So now you can run the uh, in the mesh, there's a mesh checker. You can run it to check for the mesh quality, or you can uh, actually see that there is that warning is now gone, and I fixed it. That warning is not there anymore. So that is what uh, we can do with this. Um, uh, the meshing, there's a lot of tools available in the mesh to do the surface mesh, to do the um, uh, the uh, sweep meshes. I can also change it with the different type of, uh, like if I have a surface mesh, I can uh, offset it, rotate it. I can sweep it, go even along the spline to create the very streamlined mesh on my complex components. Very powerful tools. Many times, even at the Abacus, people used to compare with HyperMesh. But here on the platform, the meshing is very comparative and even bad, sometimes better than hypermesh softwares. So, okay, so now I have the mesh, uh, that's good. So I will just uh, hide it here, uh, uh, my mesh. Now, what I want to show you one more thing here before I move forward, the material properties. So every, material is applied here. So if you expand the material in 3DX platform, the every material has four properties. Appearance, which is for rendering, simulation properties, which is this one. And then it ha one has the drafting properties that when you're taking 2D drawings, how those sections and everything will come up. Uh, actually, let's go here. 
and I will show you. Uh, I will go to my setup. Uh, model not the mesh because and i want to show that i want to edit this domain properties pick this one and here it shows you that how it is defined the elastic properties you can look for the plastic properties if you want to and you can pick on those to define it there could be hyper elastic properties if you want to define those and all those things can be defined and the fourth one is composite properties if you are working with the composite part. Uh, material can be a core material or a covering material. So you can also have a red paint on this part and I can define the properties to that and make it work. It's very, very, which is the things which are not possible in the past. I have done some type of a double shot injection molded components or even the knobs, which is a chrome plated. There's an issue, but here on the platform, I have a solution to handle those problems very easily. Now, once uh, this is defined, now let's talk about the simulation. Let's talk, uh, no, before that, we want to do the connections. So let's say I hide uh, my, this thing, and I want to create the connection. So let's go here uh, in the tree, and I just want to hide my bolts. And I very quickly want to create a virtual bolt. So virtual board, very powerful tool. You select the edge, it will define the nominal diameter and the um, face of the bolt which touches this. So I select that, then I go here, I remove that. So it is automatically grounded, but I want to go and put this bolt in this. And I say, update mesh, okay. And one more thing is that I want it rigid, not deformable, So the rigid bolt defined. Another very powerful tool here again is that once you define a bolt, whether it is uh, virtual or otherwise, you can say bolt replication. You select this bolt, run fine. Whether it is four or 500, it will automatically identify the same diameter holes which are defined for this. And you can say apply. And all the virtual bolts are applied here and you can see that they are here now. So that is that simple. So once this is being done, uh, I want to take you to the simulation to show to show you that how the simulation will work. So in the now scenario building, what will we do? We'll make some cases. So let's flip our thing to scenario. So actually it is ch changing my apps on the top. So currently I was in a structural model, now I'm in a structural scenario creation. But it has made so much easy, user-friendly that you can handle it whichever way you like. So here I am in the scenario building and very effective tool, assistant. If you turn on this assistant, uh, I think I have an assistant on my other screen. Give me one second to pull it. Uh, where's my assistant though? Anyhow, so I will go here and I do uh, in the structural scenario, I want a procedure and I want to do a static step. I can create a step and I will call it pre-tension step. Go to advance and I just want a unsymmetric solver. I keep it hundred, uh, like a first increment one second and total time one second. I will want to create another step here and all these things are getting created now in the scenario. Pre-tension, I want the pressure. And for the pressure, I go here and I define at 0.5 and I defined it. Now you can uh, very quickly go and uh, change it to the pretension here. And I want to do, and I'm not, this is all the post processing, I'm defining loads and restraints. I go to loads and I go to restraints first, I go clamp and I want to clamp this. 
say okay I want to create a planar symmetry. I can go like that and I can select the planar symmetry on all these spaces. Correct. Then I can also go and I can define the bolt restraints. But in the bolt restraints, I want to define in the pressure um, uh, step. And I want this. And I'm doing only one because I'm running slightly short of time. So similarly, I can do all of them. Then I can also go and change my step to pretension and I can define the loads, which is the bolt force. And I can define a bolt force of 500 here. And the same can be repeated for all of them. I can also go again, flip my, uh, uh, step to pressure and it goes here. You can do right click and change here also, but it has made so much easy to handle it like that. I want a pressure uh, on inside of this and I can say that I want to go for a phrase phase propagation. I select this phase, I say tangency propagate. It propagates everywhere. Now I don't want this phase to be under pressure. So I take that phase out and I apply currently based on the abacus it works on a unit system but because it is uh, a platform is skittier you can also define 100 psi a different unit and if you click on this it automatically converts into newton meter square and like that and now i can define the pressure on the bottom too and the same way i can say 100 psi and uh, okay, and then one thing which I want to define in the interactions is that I want to show, I want to define my contact conditions and uh, the things. So I, de I define those because it is a general contact. I don't have to define the contact between all these faces. And I can just define if I want the contact properties. Now I will quickly try to do that I will go and uh, try to bring an already created simulation and i open it for you to show you that how i can run the piece um, like a post processing because i cannot solve it very quickly during the web, uh, webinar so this is my simulation technically speaking this is a viewer and this type of a web viewer is also available from your uh, ipad from your smartphones it tells me i'm looking for pressure a pretension because there was a pretension zero first step and the, the and that one went for multiple seconds because i ran it for 0.5 second increments correct and i can do that now let's say i will open it for you and i will show you in details that what we can do with the uh results Okay, so these are my results now, and I can go to the result domain, and it is preparing for it. Uh, slight lag. Sometimes, because I'm on a very far away server, it slightly lags. It doesn't happen on the cloud generally, but uh, the local server, you could, could tell there could be a snowstorm in Montreal and I can get affected. Mm. Okay, so these are the quick results I want to show you. I'm looking at the one masses. I can uh, quickly go and change uh, if I go here and let's say I go right click and in the legend definition, I just want to show that I want to I only want to check at seven because it is going past my yield strength. 
And I say this, now it is telling me it will fail like that, but that is uh, too much. So I will make it say 8.5. And now you are seeing that close. You can uh, want to, in the display, you can animate the results. So it will show you the animations. It can be fast or slow. I can reduce the speed if I want to. I can uh, check for the cross sections and you want to cut it and you can see that how the cross section is uh, getting created and at the bowl there's a pre-tension load. Uh, I can also do multiple cross sections if I want to. If I want to keep it or close it, it's my um, uh, prerogative. So I have that created. Similarly, if I want to go, I just want to quickly show you that there are the ways to compare the results. So I have the one message here. I can have the displacement, say, in this. And you say, okay. And you will see both of them like this and compare them if you want to. Uh, you can do different settings. You can have multiple um, different type of analysis listed here. And you can see it. Uh, you can. Um, also go and uh, one more thing which is good to see here is that in the results uh, i can run for some of the uh, xy plots and i can create because on the history based uh, analysis i can run for the history and i want to look for the nodes displacement based on time the nodes displacement with respect to the a, um, a resultant forces and based on that all those things can be analyzed and uh, this is a simple example just to show you the look and the feel of the uh, uh, platform it is very easy very intuitive anybody who is interested to talk about this to explore this or have a detailed demonstration on your part or you want to discuss with us I will encourage you to please give us a call. Uh, my details are there um, um, and you can send the email to the Solid Experience or on our um, sales portal and we will be very happy to help you with any of your needs. This example is simple. I can, uh, I can show you a bird going into an engine or a bird striking a, a wind uh, a turbine, but uh, it, is, it is abacus. It can solve anything but I cannot show that in a small webinar, that complex examples, but this is just to show you the hyphen handle. The, the advantage here is that, say it is a very common thing which we used to do in other analysis in Kitya V5. If I want to add a new finite element model, which is like a finer mesh, I can do that. And I can, in the, in the simulation, in the scenario, I can add that instead of using this, FEM representation, use the other FEM representation and it can easily get me to the point where I want to. I can unlink the parts, I can link the parts. There could be a combination, individual meshes in the, each part and you can combine it in a given FEM representation or it could be all parts which is one, ass assembled into one mesh. The, any approach is possible, anything is possible because everything is an object and everything can be linked to anything provided you are doing it right, and it is very flexible. So that is the whole uh, idea of this power of simulation on the platform for designers, engineers, and even for the analysis. If you have any questions, I'm open for that. Or, uh, um, um, Meher, can you please open um, uh, yes. for any questions? Yes, actually, uh, we have a couple of questions here. Uh, so one question was, how many cores uh, can we solve with the embedded license without tokens? Yeah, it is four cores. Four cores, okay, yes. perfect. Technically, uh, you can solve more cores too, but then these four will not work. If you have tokens, you can use, if the solution is created in a lower, lower uh, uh, like a role, it can still use tokens, but then it will not use these four cores. But four cores for that. That's the answer. Okay, perfect. Uh, and there we have another question here. So one person wanted to know if, if there is a difference between on-premise and on-cloud applications. 
There is no difference on Permis on cloud is exactly the same. It is same powerful. The cloud is much more simpler to uh, if you if you don't have the problem of putting the data on the uh, secured cloud and the cloud is getting very secure these days. There is no difference. Okay, interesting. Uh, if anyone else has any questions, uh, we'll give you a couple of seconds here to shoot one over to us. Uh, so we'll just wait here for a little bit. Okay, uh, well, if nobody has any more questions, uh, I think that will conclude our webinar today. If ever you do have any uh, questions, you can always email us at info at solidexperience.com. Experience is written with an X, not EX. So info at solidexperience.com, and we'll be more than happy to help. Thank you very much for taking part in our webinar today. Hope you've uh, learned something interesting and have yourself a nice day. Thank you very much.